Hey, how's it going guys? Phil here, and this is a review of the Andin Star Digital Microscope with HD Video Camera. You'll receive the microscope, a set of 12 prepared slides, stage clip block, three light filters, white, black, and translucent, a remote control, USB power cord with dual connectors, and an instruction manual. This is the microscope. It is eight and a half inches tall, seven inches long, and four and a half inches wide. The construction is mostly lightweight plastic, and it has a five inch diagonal LCD. Just under the screen, this black tube is the focus controller for the lens. The large blue knobs control the height of the lens, which can move up and down about two inches. Directly below the lens is the LED light source, which you can use with any of the three light filters to produce different images when viewing your slides. Before use, be sure to remove the lens protector cap over the lens. Along the bottom edge of the screen are physical controls, like power, mode, zoom in and out, IR receiver for the remote, brightness adjustment, OK key, and photo key. The remote control has more options than the physical buttons. You've got a photo button, menu key, video freeze, mode, zoom in and out, exposure adjustment, OK button, frequency selector, display grid lines, sharpness adjustment, lock and unlock, LCD brightness adjustment, NTSC or PAL selector, negative inversion, black and white toggle, default settings key, and screen rotation. The screen's viewing angle is also adjustable about 60 degrees. At the back of the microscope on the base is the power port for the illuminator. Use the barrel plug on the USB charging cable to power the light. Along the top edge of the screen, you have the micro USB charging port, three status LEDs, and a micro SD card slot. The SD card slot accepts up to a 64 gigabyte card though one is not included. Once inserted, push down on the card and it should click into place. This is an empty port and not used. The hole to the far right is the reset pinhole. The right angled USB connector on the charging cable connects to the power port on the LCD screen. And when plugged in and charging, the first LED illuminates red and it shuts off when the unit is fully charged. This microscope can operate unplugged from the wall for several hours on a full charge. When plugged into a power source, the microscope will automatically turn on the LCD and the LED light in the base. For best viewing, peel off the plastic screen protector from the LCD first. Let's have a look at some of the included slides. Each slide has a colorful background, a label on the left hand side describing the sample, the sample in the middle, and a graphic on the right hand side which shows you where the sample came from. The sets included with the microscope are random, and mine contains samples from both plants and animals. To view the slides, first we'll have to place them on the stage clip block, which has spring-loaded clips that lift and rotate to keep your slides in place. But you'll notice that out of the box the spring clips are set quite high, and aren't able to tightly grip the slides. So what we'll do is grab a small screwdriver and tighten the screws at the springs to lower them a bit and provide more tension. Now the clips firmly clamp the slide and it doesn't move around easily or fall off the block. To release the slides, just press down on the end of the clip and rotate it away from the slide. Let's have a look at this locust wing. After placing the slide and block under the lens, We'll adjust the height of the lens lower with the blue knob until the image is in focus. The magnification is about 200 times, and that looks pretty good. Now we can move the slide around to find the sample. The microscope is quite sensitive to table vibrations. When I tap the table, the image will shake around for a bit before stabilizing. This is also true if you touch the LCD, for example to zoom in or out using the physical controls. This is the highest level of zoom you can achieve at eight times digital zoom. A 
It's important to note that the photo button doesn't actually do anything when you push it. To take a photo or video of what's happening on the screen, you actually have to press the OK button. And now you can see in video mode that it is recording. The same is true for the remote control. To start or stop recording, press the OK button. The red photo button at the top of the remote doesn't do anything. This is a recorded video on the Andin Star Digital Microscope. We are looking at the locust wing. And here's what the audio that's actually captured by the microscope sounds like. I'm speaking from a distance about one foot away from the microscope. To avoid causing vibrations when touching the screen, you can use the remote control to zoom in and out instead. The menu key on the remote allows you to change the unit's settings. The note that this menu can't be accessed using the physical keys, so it's important that you don't lose the remote. In the video settings, you can change the video resolution with 1080p 1920 by 1080 being the highest resolution. Set loop recording length, which automatically divides your video recordings into clips. Exposure to adjust the brightness of the screen turn on and off audio recording, and toggle off and on the date stamp. In the general settings, you can set the date and time, language, display frequency, format the SD card, reset the microscope to default settings, and check its firmware version. When viewing a sample, if you hit the freeze button on the remote, then the image on the screen will not change, even if you move the sample around, unless you unfreeze the camera feed. When you change the mode to photo mode, the proportions are slightly different, but you can capture 12 megapixel still photos from the camera by pressing the OK button. The third mode is playback mode, and you can view the recorded videos and photos that are saved to the SD card. You can also choose to lock or delete them. The grid line feature is interesting because it allows you to add and customize nine on-screen lines when you turn on the crosshair option. You can adjust the settings of each line individually, which is assigned a number, and select whether it should be vertical or horizontal, choose a color, line width, and position on the screen. This can help you orient and define specific areas of interest on the sample that you're viewing. So far, we've been viewing the samples without a light filter, but let's try installing the translucent light filter and see how that changes the image. When installing the filters, note that there's a shiny side and a matte side of each disc. Be sure to install the discs matte side up so that the light can pass through and diffuse correctly. With the translucent filter, we can definitely see more layers of the sample. As edges are better defined, and we get less reflection from the adhesive holding the sample to the slide. With the solid white filter, we see more textures because the light doesn't pass through the sample from the bottom, but is instead reflected off the top surface back towards the lens. And finally, with the black disc, we can see the contrast of the sample versus the dark background, which gives us a better view of some of the definition and detail of the sample. Overall, this digital microscope works well and provides high-definition video and photos from its lens at a decently high magnification at around 200x. The images and video are clear, and the microscope is easy to use. Not only would this be a fun and educational tool for kids to use and learn from, but it can also be used for practical examination of small objects or electronics repair. I hope you enjoyed this review you can ask me any questions in the comments. I'll put a link to the product in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and join me next time.